Hello and welcome to my alternative channel, Anti-War. And on Anti-War today, we're looking at Yingling Premium Beer. Yingling Premium Beer. The company was founded in 1829. Now, I'm not sure when Yingling Premium hit the market, but uh, definitely was not 1829. Let's get it to focus again. Four point five percent alcohol, twelve bit turnus units. There we go. Introduced into Louisiana in May of twenty twenty three. Best price, $17.99, a suitcase, 24 cans. Smells like pungent grain, pungent fermented grains. Smell like cereal grains. Taste, cheers. And they use two-row and six-row barley malt sure some kind of corn filler they don't say corn or rice hops uh somebody told me well it's not considered a craft beer oh really actually according to a certain brewing association it is considered a craft beer due to you know uh as according to their arbitrary standards totally arbitrary just whatever they call it craft beer you say what's craft beer oh well I, whatever i decide to call it this week mass produced okay so how does it compete against Budweiser five percent core is five percent that's course banquet Miller High Life 4.6 Miller genuine draft 4.7 Paps blue ribbon 4.8 Schlitz 4.6 Old Milwaukee, 4.6, something like that. Saw Old Milwaukee today, but it was out of date. Um, how does it compete against those? To me, it's a little bit better than those, than those, except maybe Schlitz. It's not much better, just a little bit better. You know, a smidgen better. It's got an unusual flavor. I can't pin it down. I was telling my friend David today at his house. I said, I don't know something about the flavor. I know it's different, but I don't know what it is. It's just, I can't place it. It's like a spiciness. It's not like ghost pepper spice, you know, like um, holiday spices, but it's not that either. So that, that doesn't mean it makes sense, but some kind of like herbal note from the yeast, maybe. It's, it's a more interesting beer. You say, what about Genesee? Somebody asked me that. I haven't had a lot of experience with regular red can Genesee. But I have had it. I first had it in 1997 on U.S. Highway 11 northbound in Hot Bottom, Pennsylvania. I can't remember the name of the Roadhouse restaurant. I could look it up if it's still in existence 26 years later. But really good baked chicken dinner with potatoes and greens. But um they had Genesee 12 ounce bottle. Never he had even heard of it. Tasted very nice. But you're traveling, it's hot outside summer. So there's a contextual thing to, to consider there, contextual consideration. But um I have had it since and it seemed kind of a little bit dull. A little bit dull. Um 
Foster's Lager, real solid product. But I mean, you know, they're all about the same. I mean, really, they're all about the same. So you should just shop price, in my opinion. Just whatever's cheaper. If it's a penny difference, get it. You haven't lost anything. Now, uh, this one, does, but on t a flavor only, this one does seem to be a little bit nicer. Maybe they're using a better hop variety or something. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, it's world class. I can't get over it. It's so great. I don't know what to do. I can't handle it. <laughs> I'm so emotional about it. It's not like that. It's just nice. A store manager I was talking to said, I think it's like a budget brand. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's pretty much what Yingling. thinking to myself you know i just told him yeah but i'm thinking to myself that's pretty much what yingling always was it just um kind of figure we'll ride the wave we'll just like grab the back bumper of the truck the trailer hitch and ride the uh, skateboard behind it the craft beer world and we'll put out porter black and tan well i think they already put those things out they're like well we already made stuff like that porter black and tan <laughs> Lord Chesterfield Ale. Now they got the Hershey chocolate. We'll just ride behind it. Let them pull us. So that was sort of the thing, like when the microbrew industry started in the 80s, Yingling was like, yeah, we already make stuff like this, Porter and so forth. But then they start making the traditional lager 1987, which was a throwback to an older, darker lager they made. And it's worked out for them. Look how well they're doing. So, but they didn't get too crazy. The craziest they got was Hershey chocolate mixed with their porter and the uh, raging eagle mango now there's a there's a new mango that's not six percent it's a four and a half percent i don't know i, I can't remember the name i haven't seen it around here wasn't too thrilled with the raging eagle six percent but um i think it's gone they just uh they don't have it on their website i guess they killed it <clears throat> something different though i can't really take issue with it they tried something Maybe it wasn't the best thing, didn't work out, but it was you know, something, something to try. Um, this one is something to try. Now, okay, I'm, I'm down to my last two cans. So I'm, am I going to re-up, as we say, <laughs> as we say, right? Am I going to re-up YS, Yingling and Sons, but now it's Yingling and Daughters. I'm not really going to do that because for a dollar for $19.99, I can get a 30 pack of Milwaukee's Best Light. I'm a loose 4% alcohol by volume, but eh, oh well, it has that's not a lot. And uh, secondly, uh, Milwaukee's Best Light has a good flavor for a light beer, believe it or not. Probably your best option on light beer. True, true story. I'm not saying that just because of the. You say, well, it's because of controversy since April 1st, 2023. It's nothing to do with that. I always thought it had a better flavor. Okay. So, anyway, uh, Yingling Premium Beer. How would I score it? Notice I'm like left hand, right hand. I don't know which hand. When I write something, like if I write a check to somebody, it's going to be my left hand. But if I'm using scissors, like to cut something, like say, oh, let me cut this paper. I use my right hand. So I guess it depends what I'm doing and which hand, you know. So scissors. I remember when I was in elementary school, they gave me left hand scissors to cut and I'm like can't use these throw these mutant scissors 
left-handed people are strange, you know. But anyway, um, but um, I'm going to score it an A, 93 out of 100. Say, oh, for the style, American Adjunct Lager, 93, most excellent. I am scoring it for the style because it is what it is. It's in that style. I wouldn't score it as an imperial stout with uh, an, a bourbon barrel and imperial stout with cocoa nibs. So that's not what it is. And I have a problem when people get on the internet and say, oh, well, of course, stout is better than lager. There, and, and who made that rule? What they mean to say is, I prefer stout over lager. That's what they mean to say. But they've taken an opinion, personal opinion, and they're stating it as a fact. Well, I'm sorry, can't do that. Not in, not in a logical sense. Now, if you said, that's a stout, and that's an adjunct lager. Those are statements of fact. It's not an evaluation. That's a stout. That's a lager. And then you qualified it by saying, in my case, I prefer stouts over lagers, so therefore I would pick this over that. Okay, that would make perfect sense, and we'd all go along with it. But to but to point blank say that's better than that because that's a better style. That's, that's insanity. It's like saying uh, fried fish is better than uh, pork chops. Why do you say that? Well, I like it better. Oh. forgot the world revolves around you i don't know what i was thinking okay but that's not really how it works okay all right okay yingling been thrilled with it thrilled with it actually it gets better every time i mean it's going to reach a point it's, it's pretty much reached that point now where it's like okay you tried it got better and better and better and now it's like you know topped out like okay that's as good as it's gonna get it's nice i like it and my friend david told me you're at walmart i said yeah he said you're looking for bargains i said i'm always i'm always doing that that's why i'm at walmart i said but um it doesn't always work out in the beer world though which is the nature of this video the theme this oh i forgot about schaefer <laughs> looking at schaefer well of course i forgot about schaefer we haven't gotten it in my town in 24 years but um that's such a light taste and product it's so good though but you know so light but you can't get it i'm i'm sorry i looked at the glass bottle over there um in the beer world generally generally i'm talking about the united states i don't live in thailand i don't live in belarus i don't live in england so i don't know what their budget beers taste like i never had them except whatever we got sent over here maybe stuff from martin's which really wasn't that budget uh so um over here let's say since 2013 you buy a bunch of beer, it ain't much worse than the, the premium. And then sometimes it's better. So my experience is you may as well shop price. Can you get some real nasty ones? Used to be able to get some real nasty ones, be able to, if so you'd want to. You know what I mean? You'd run across some real dogs. Those have largely faded, mainly because people would never repurchase them. They'd say, oh, oh. This is a nightmare, you know, they wouldn't buy it. So all these Milwaukee's Best Reserve and Milwaukee's Classic Ice and Nighthawk Premium Malt Liquor, they, they've all um, gone away, thankfully. So the worst, <laughs> so the worst stuff you find in America's cities today, I'm talking about in the southern cities, say Houston, Louisiana. New Orleans, Louisiana, Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, uh, uh, Tallahassee, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, the worst you'd find would be um, Old English 800 brand malt liquor, Colt 45, and all, but, they're, but they're not bad. So if the worst you find is nice, you're in good shape. Okay, um, you're in pretty good shape unless you drink too much and got some kind of like medical problems because you drink too much. You wouldn't be in good shape. All right, now um, that's it. So thank you. And I think, well, I know unless something happens, but I, I'm, I know the next time I get on this alternative channel, I'm going to bring in the Island Coastal Lager. My friend David was not too thrilled with it, although he was, you know, sort of favorable towards it, but he didn't buy it. But he said for $17.99 a 12 pack, he was, he had great animosity towards it. But um, I'm going to bring that in and uh, it's kind of a obscure little pr product, you know, but uh, we'll bring that in and then uh, we'll be back to the main channel. Let's go back to the main channel now. Now we're going to take a little walk back to the main channel. All right. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye.